Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel and welcome to all new viewers. My name is Olka and I'm a UK-based vet and today I'd like to share with you some tips on how to prepare yourself and your pet for a vet appointment. Before I get to it, please don't forget to like, subscribe and ring that bell if you enjoy my content. This allows me to keep this channel going. I aim to release a video every week. I also have an Instagram account where I post daily, so go and check it out. Without further delay, let's dive in into the topic of this week's video. Lots of people, not to mention pets, find vet appointments very stressful. You often don't know what to expect and you worry about your pet. After all, you want what is best for them. If your everyday job and interests have nothing to do with biology or medicine, you have to entrust your pet's well-being to your vets completely, which can be scary. Many of us don't like to lose control, but one thing you can definitely do to help yourself, your pet and your vet is to prepare and also get some of that control back. Have you got your pet insured? If not, please do consider it. Veterinary fees can be pricey, especially if something serious happens to your pet. It could be a nasty fracture or possibly your middle-aged dog or cat becomes chronically ill. These bills can reach hundreds to thousands of pounds. Even if your young pet has been perfectly healthy so far, unfortunately, it is unlikely it will stay like that forever. Even I, a vet, have my cat insured. I would not try to get pet insurance only when something bad happens, because remember, the vast majority of insurance companies do not cover pre-existing conditions. If you do have insurance set up, great. Before a vet appointment, especially if it is not a routine one, it might be a good idea to call your insurance provider to make sure everything is in working order and all payments have been made so you don't end up in a situation where you thought your little one was insured, agreed to a high estimate for a procedure or treatment, and only after that you find out that your insurance claim was rejected. Bring your insurance documents with you as well, just in case. The name of your insurance provider, insurance number and excess amount would be the most important ones. Lots of owners assume vets have extensive knowledge about insurances or that insurance providers and vet practices are somehow connected. In most cases, this is not true, although veterinary receptionists very often know a lot about it and sometimes can help you navigate how to claim your money back. Before you get insurance, I'd suggest you familiarize yourself with what your insurance actually covers and what it doesn't cover. Owners are frequently surprised by this. Did you arrange safe transport for your pet? If it's a dog, think about distance. If you need to get them to your practice by car, have you got appropriate measures to keep it still and safe? There are a variety of harnesses, leads, seat belts for dogs. Plan ahead and get one. For when you are at your vets, you will need a harness or a collar and a reliable lead. You don't want your dog running about, escaping and basically having no control over it. It can put your dog and others in danger. Even if your dog is very friendly and calm outside of veterinary practice setting, that might not be the case when you come in. Many dogs are confused by different smells, various animals and unwanted, weird attention a vet gives them during a physical examination. Stressed, scared dogs can easily try to bite, even if it's out of character for them. Most veterinary practices will have muzzles, but if you want your own, which will be well fitted, get one beforehand. You also should learn how to put one on your pet. Putting a muzzle on in a consult room for the first or even a second time can often be tricky to almost impossible. I couldn't even count how many times a dog wouldn't let me get close to it out of fear and an owner was not able to put a muzzle on them. It's an important skill to learn well. If you've got a cat, make sure you've got a comfortable, size-appropriate cat carrier for them and some towels to put on the bottom of it. Bringing it in a cardboard box, a bag, or especially carrying it in your hands is not a good idea. 
These days, lots of veterinary practices have designated waiting areas for different species, most commonly area for cats and a separate area for dogs. Sometimes also a special one for your little fairies like rabbits, hamsters, etc. If you're not sure, ask a receptionist. If a special waiting area isn't available, don't sit with your cat next to a big noisy dog. It will stress them out. Some animals are particularly nervous when coming to the vet. There is a few things you could try to improve or fix it. There are a variety of calming supplements available which you could use prior and during a veterinary appointment. They can be based on various herbs, artificial pheromones, amino acids and more. For some pets they work like magic, for some pets they don't work at all. Also mind that if you tried just one, let's say herbal based one, and you've seen no improvement, it doesn't necessarily mean that a different one won't work. My advice is try a few different ones before you give up. If it's a spray, you could use it inside your cat's carrier or on your dog's bandana. If it's a syrup, you'd give it prior to an appointment or even for a few consecutive days before. There are many options available. If supplements still aren't enough to calm your pet, get advice from your vet about potentially using something stronger next time. Another thing you can do to make these appointments more pleasant is to get them used to the veterinary practice. It won't be possible now during the pandemic, but normally most veterinary practices encourage casual visits to the building with your pet, especially with dogs. You just take them in, give them some treats and attention, stroke them, pet them, whatever they like. If any staff members have time, they will fuss over them too. You could make them used to scales and weigh them. You wouldn't believe how many dogs hate scales. Let's talk about some questions your vet is likely to ask you. It might be a good idea for you to think about the answers before the appointment. In most cases, your vet will be interested in what your pet eats, how much and whether this has changed lately. You wouldn't believe how many owners cannot remember what brand of food they use when asked in a consult room. Same applies to water intake. Your vet will likely want to know about your pet's stool and urine output, both quality and quantity. This applies especially to non-routine appointments. And here again, I often really struggle to get these answers during the first appointment. It especially applies to cats which go outside. Find out whether your pet's vaccinations and usual prophylactics like flea and worming treatments are up to date. Prepare a list of your concerns and underline your chief complaint. Bring a written list if it helps. Think about any changes in your pet's habits and environment that have recently occurred. If you need to bring your pet to the vets, it's better to plan for possible delays, sometimes significant ones. Unfortunately, in most cases, vet schedules are fully booked or close to it. If a vet encounters a more complicated case or even worse, an emergency requiring an operation, you will need to wait as these take priority. Try not to get upset with them. They don't like these delays either. Please be patient. Another very important thing is to prepare a list of meds your pet is taking, their names, their doses, and how long they have been taking them for. If you can, take the boxes or leaflets as well. This again is a common problem I stumble upon. The owner says their pet is on some meds, but they don't know what they are. If a vet doesn't know, they cannot plan accordingly and treat your pet. If your pet has been treated somewhere else and you changed practices or you've got a few you go to, make sure your vet has your pet's current medical history. You can call the veterinary practice to get that medical history. Try not to do it half an hour before as it usually takes some time for that history to be sent over. Prepare questions you might want answered. This will make the appointment go smoother and be less chaotic. It will also ensure that all your concerns have been addressed in an organized manner. If you are bringing in a cat and it goes outside, remember to get them in the house a few hours beforehand. Sometimes owners would cancel appointments because they simply couldn't find their cat. Think about your expectations and what you need to happen during an appointment and plan your budget. Your exact expectations won't always be able to be met, but it will help your vet to make you as happy as possible and lay out the most appropriate options tailored for you and your pet. 
it will also make communication much easier and efficient. You might need to sign some documents and papers, so take some ID with you. If you think your pet might need some tests, it may be a good idea to bring them on an empty stomach. Many blood tests require this, as well as sedation for other tests, like imaging, for example. If in doubt, call before and ask. Finally, if after an appointment you think you might forget something or you want more information, ask your vet or a veterinary receptionist for a printout from the appointment and some reliable source of information to read. Your vet will often be able to provide you with some reliable website or leaflets they might store in the practice. There is a lot of wrong and misleading information online and it might be difficult for you to know which sources are the best to read. I hope this video will help you come more prepared for your next vet appointment, which in result will make you happier and more relaxed. Remember, your vet wants what is best for you and your pet. And lastly, thank you for watching. I hope you liked my video, like, subscribe and I hope I'll see you here again soon. Bye!